Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at CPA questions that deal with partnership. This topic is covered on the FAR CPA exam as well as an advanced accounting course. Now when I say it's covered in my advanced accounting course, it means if you go to my website farhatlectures.com, you go to my advanced accounting, you'll have this topic in details cover. So in this session, I'll go over the CPA questions. Kind of, you want to know if you know the questions. If you are comfortable with, with the questions and the answers, then you should be good to go. If you feel, you know what, I really need to learn a little bit more, then you could always uh, go to my website for additional resources. Uh, always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, finance, as well as Excel tutorial. If you like my lectures, please like them and share them because if they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Connect with me on Instagram. And, and, as I just mentioned, farhatlectures.com. I have advanced accounting. You can go there and check out my advanced accounting lessons that will cover this topic. The way I teach on my website is different than a CPA course. I teach as if you are a college student. I teach you the material from scratch. I don't assume you know anything. And for many students, that's very, that's very, very that's very helpful to their learning style. Let's take a look at the first question. We have Paul and Wilson formed a partnership, each contributing assets to the business. Paul contributed equipment with the current value and access of its carrying. Current market value in excess of the carrying value. It means they have a gain on the asset. Wilson contributed land with the carrying value in excess of the current value. That's fine too. It means you have a land that's worth a hundred. Uh, you bought it at a hundred. Now the fair market value is one fifty. Which of the following should be recorded that which should be recorded at fair value? Basically, what equipment, land, or both? Look. When you contribute an asset to the partnership, it's recorded at fair market value, the tangible asset. Equipment and land are tangible, therefore both are recorded at the tangible, at the fair market value, whatever their fair market value is. D and Z formed the DZ partnership on November 13th and contributed the following. D contributed cash of 40,000. Z contributed land 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 of 60,000 and with that land was subject to a mortgage okay which assumed by the partnership so the partnership took over the mortgage z's basis in the land was 43,000 basis in the land means what when she bought it it has a basis it means the basis is how much she purchased it at 43,000. The partners agree to share the profit and losses equally. What is Z's capital on November 13th? So Z contributed the land, but with the land came a came a uh, came a uh, mortgage. Now here's the here's what they're trying to trick you here. The first trick you have to be aware of is this. And that's why you have to study for FAR and regulation separately. Uh, if we if this is if this was a reg exam this is for exam the basis will transfer simply put the basis will transfer but this is not this is not this is not the reg exam this is the for exam we're, we're, we're following financial accounting and reporting what's going to happen is we're going to take the fair market value and since there is a mortgage attached to the land we reduce the mortgage which is 25000 because if you contributed a land with a mortgage and we took over the mortgage you really your net contribution is 35000 therefore the part uh, the, the z's capital is 35000 when that contribution is made be careful and don't use 43 that's regulation we're not talking about regulation here so this is this is the trick they will they will try to throw at you the difference between how do you treat the contribution between gap and ifrs the partnership of scott and patricia has 180,000 of net worth so this is the new this is the partners together the partnership would like to add tim as a partner plus tim uh, with an exact one-fifth so tim tim will have one-fifth of the partnership tim will have Tim equal to one fifth of the partnership. How much does Tim need to contribute? So the question is how much Tim needs to contribute? This sounds like a GMAT problem if you ask me. So uh, so if we have, uh, so Scott and Patricia, 180,000, plus we're gonna add Tim. Tim's gonna receive one fifth 
of the whole partnership. We don't know what the whole partnership is. Therefore, we're gonna consider the whole partnership X because once we add 10, we're gonna have a new total. That new total is X. That's gonna give us the total partnership we said the unknown X. Now, all we have to do is solve for X to find out what's the new partnership then we'll give Tim one-fifth of that new partnership. We'll, we'll ask Tim to contribute one-fifth of the value. Well, let's see. If we solve for X, so we have 180,000 equal to, if we move one-fifth X to the other side, that's going to give us four-fifth X. Now, to have X on one side, we multiply by five-fourths. So if we multiply 180,000, Multiply by five fourth to eliminate the four fifth. So one, so five divided by four times one hundred and eighty thousand. Give gonna give us x of two hundred and twenty five. So when we solve x equal to two hundred and twenty five, this is the total partnership. This is the total partnership after we add Tim. Now Tim is going to get times one fifth times one fifth. So if we go back to the calculator here, and we'll take two twenty five times one-fifth is 20 percent times one-fifth whoops sorry uh, times 225 and we'll get one-fifth yeah one-fifth is 45,000 that then that's one of the answers so Tim's will have to contribute 45,000 okay uh, so let's go ahead and reconcile so we started with Tim as Scott and Patricia for 180,000 we said Tim will need to contribute 45,000 equal to 225 just kind of double check our numbers 225 times 1.2 which is one fifth will give us 45,000 so you could always just double check yourself to make sure it's correct Homer Bart and Lisa are partners in a partnership Lisa wishes to retire which of the following method of accounting for her retirement could increase the individual could increase the individual's partner's account without changing the total net asset of the partnership. Uh, here we have to be aware of there are two methods. There's the goodwill method and there's the bonus method. And before going into the exam, you need to understand both methods. Uh, so if you don't know what these methods are, I strongly suggest you go to farhatlectures.com, but I'm going to try to solve this question here. But basically, when we when we have the bonus method, the under let's start with the goodwill method. Under the goodwill method, what's going to happen is we will create an intangible when when the when when the partners withdraw. And under the goodwill method, we have two methods. We have the full and we have the partial but simply put when 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 they when when, when the partners leave we're going to we're going to have to recognize an intangible and under the goodwill method usually the partners they will agree on how to make the withdrawal under the bonus method under the bonus method someone will get a bonus and as a result you could increase the individual capital account so which of the method? The bonus method could increase the individual capital account. That's something you need to be aware of, something you need to be familiar with. So don't go into the exam not knowing the difference between the goodwill method and the bonus method. FarhatLectures.com is a place to explain this and show you a few examples. Let's take a look at this example. We have D and G are partners in a DG partnership. During the current year, D, D and G maintain an average capital balance of their partnership of 140 and 80,000 respectively. They share the profit and losses equally. Each receive 5% on their capital balances. Partnership profit before interest was 5,000. How much the ending balance for D partnership is? Okay, so let's, the best way to do this is to kind of have a table. We have D, G, okay. The first thing is their beginning balances. Their beginning balances is 140 and 80,000. And based on the agreement is each one of them get 5%, get 5% of their uh, and, and partnership interest because they can they have a, they're maintaining a balance at the company at the partnership therefore they are rewarded. So we have the profit starting with the profit. We have a profit of 5,000. Before we distribute the profit we have to give them 5 five percent of their capital balance so one hundred and forty thousand times five percent that should be seven thousand dollars so we're going to increase their balance by seven thousand and uh, five percent times eighty thousand is four thousand this is for the and where is, where is this coming from because of the five percent interest five percent interest well if they have a profit of five and we're contributing eleven we're going to be at negative six 
because we only have a profit of five. Now what's going to happen? The profit turned into a loss. What do we do with any losses? We we allocate them equally. Equally, equally means negative three thousand four d, negative three thousand four g, and this is what's going to happen now. Everything is allocated. Now we are ready to compute the balances. So we have 140,000 plus 7, 147 minus 3, 144. They're asking us about D, and this is the answer. This is the answer. Okay, so make sure to remember you allocate the interest first. Then you, whatever profit or loss left after the interest is, is allocated equally. So you have to be very careful. Again, this topic is, I have, I have this topic explained in details with several examples on my website farhatlectures.com which i invite you to visit if you are studying for your cpe exam and serious about passing your exam serious about adding those 10 to 15 points the cpe exam is a lifetime investment you're talking about 30 to 40 years invest in yourself don't shortchange yourself use all your resources to pass study hard good luck and stay safe